You can see the split there. Come on, boy. Settle down. I'm trying to turn into this tram line. Come on, come on, come on. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning, Holly. There we are, we can we? What a be. That's all already done. Ah, you bad this. Yeah, we're stuck. Are waiting. Hopefully there's chemical getting delivered today so we'll get more spraying done. Also a lovely job, we need to go and see the septic tank. I don't know if it's running right. Let's make a bit more space in here. Got the keys for the septic tank. Let's go have a look. There's just a bit more of a smell than usual. I don't know whether everything's working right. I'll just check whether there's air going through the aerator. It's exactly the same as Tom Pemberton's slurry tank put an aeration system in below to keep it mixed and moving it's exactly the same the air flows through it and um, just to keep everything moving and fluid so you don't get any solids if you're eating your dinner probably skip forward a wee bit Weesh. the aerator's working anyway that's fine septic tank seems fine I don't know whether I'm just thinking I'm smelling it more or whether it is actually smelling more but aeration system's working, it's all bubbling away and it's not overflowing so It was serviced not that long ago as well so I think it's fine Last couple of days we had about 5 mil of rain Just checking the gauge here, there's another mil in there That's fine, so 6 mil over the last 2-3 days Which, absolutely fine If it's sunny from now for another couple of weeks, smashing She's daft <laughs> Just passing the coos, that's one of the new ones, that's a new calf, that's a new cow, that's a new calf. Don't know where the other two are. I'm pretty chuffed for them. You can see they're quite milky, they're a decent size, they're not too big, don't want massive cows because they take that much more feed as well. Yeah, good milk on that cow, good milk on that cow, the other two are good milk as well. Fairly slight but they'll take the Charlie Bull, no bother. I say that, no bother, that's, uh, that's asking for trouble. Cow, I love the cows, love it. My favourite bit. The coos. Right, I've squeezed everything in here. This is just a wee cabinet. Only really use this cabinet along here um, if we're spraying on that day or the next day. Put stuff along here in this cabinet, but otherwise everything stays at the main store. It's just a tank that's been plasma cut open, I'm saying, put hinges on. It's an old thing. It does the job. It's bunded, so nothing can leak out if anything was to spill. Your chemical store has to be bunded, locked. There needs to be a record of everything that's in it. You need to store all your chemicals correctly so your powders above your liquids and your... There's quite a few rules and regulations to storing chemical. I think I'm going to let Percy out to these cows just this week, the next couple of days. Percy, being a Charlie, his calves should finish a bit quicker than Euro, who's an Angus bull. Okay, it's the next day. I'm currently making today's video at the end of this video, you'll see why I'm currently standing here not doing any farming. I'm going to go through the spread of the calves we're trying to get, what we're trying to do with the cattle. So we've got 43 odd cows now, two bulls, Angus and a Charlie. The objective for the farm shop is to have a good big spread of the calves that are all getting born in the springtime. Because we don't want to have loads ready at the same time. So there's probably three or four different things we're doing. First of all, the breed. So between the Charlie bull, Percy, and the Angus bull, Euro, we'll get a variation there. This is a report done in the Czech Republic on various different breeds of cattle. So they've got Angus and they've got Charlie, so that's the two we're comparing right now. So they've taken birth weights, 210 day weights, and 365 day weights. It takes a least squares mean, it's just a fancy version of an average. Um, and then these two are just standard deviations, basically variance from that average. We can ignore that. So effectively, you've got an average weight column at birth, average weight column at 210 days, average weight column at 365 days. Okay, first point to note on this, Angus versus Charlie's. Your average birth weight, Charlie's are six kilos heavier than Angus, which is about, I don't know, 18, 19% there or thereabouts. So your, your calving in theory for the Angus should be easier. Second point to make, which is more to do with the spread of the finishing weight, the average Angus after one year is 380 kilos. 
Charlie come down to there is 415 kilos. Obviously we're taking them up to in the region of 700 kilos, but if you take that as a percentage, so that's uh, 20, 30, 35 kilos out of three, that's about 10%. 10% lighter the Angus's versus the Charlie's. If you assume that's the same at finishing weight, 10% of 770 kilo. So the Charlie's will reach their weight and the Angus's will be 70 kilos behind. Say they're gaining weight at about 1.5 kilos a day. Over 70 days, that's, what's that, 40, 40, 50 days, something like that. So that's a month and a half longer to finish the equivalent Angus's versus the Charlie's. So when I put Percy out a month before Euro, I've got one month between the calves, then add on your month and a half, that's two and a half months between the Angus and the Charlie's. Then you've got to take into account bulls versus heifers. Bulls kick on and they gain weight quicker than heifers, so you're gonna have a bit of a spread there. Okay, yes, there's gonna be Charlie and Angus, bulls and heifers, but we can play around with how we're feeding them. So the heifers, we can ease off a wee bit. Bulls, we can kick on a bit. So now you add all the bits together. So, assuming we have a three month calving period for each of the bulls, you add on your months between putting Percy in and putting euro in the angus bull you've got four months there add in your one and a half months for the variation in breed so you're up to five and a half months worth of calves you then add in your variation between bulls and heifers reaching weight or bullocks because they get snipped but still reach weight a bit quicker i'm not 100 percent sure on that figure let's call it a month and a half two months so we're at seven seven and a half months then you start to add in your variation between feeding them so you pick off small ones and they can just take their time in growing. You pick off your big ones as well, feed them a wee bit more, get them kicking on and keep them moving. So seven and a half months plus your variation in the feed. So you could maybe get another month and a half out of that. So that gives you nine months of spread. So you can see the theory is there, we'll have a four month calving period, but we'll be able to have a finishing period of nine months, in theory. It might only end up eight, it might end up 10. I'm not that sure yet. Come back to this in a year, a year and a half, and we'll reassess whether it worked. Today we've got Goldburn sweet chili sausage roll. Very good. Although I say it myself. Okay, so we're back in this field. I'm not spraying at the moment because I've done the tram line we're on right now. I'm just going down so I can turn and come back up the other tram line. Doing that because we try and keep the ins and outs all going the exact same direction. Because obviously when you turn into a tram line from the end rig, you cut the corner a wee bit and you make new tracks. So if you only go in one direction, all the way around the field, each time with the fertilizer spreader and the sprayer, you then don't have two ins and outs where you've got no crop on each tram line. So you can see there, I only want one set of tracks going out of this tram line. Don't wanna go the other way around the field where it'd be going that way. Only nine hectares to do in this field, so I'm just about done. And then heading to yard number two where there's quite a lot of hectares to do. Okay, on to the next. No steel fold in, oh no, not if I don't do something, lock that. Locks the pendulum at the back. Right, I've just got here to yard number two and I'm actually just gonna put Percy out. I set up a tractor and a gate there, so open that gate and run him in. I'm gonna take a bucket and just see what he's like and just make sure he follows me with a bucket. If he doesn't, then I'll not put him out. I'll need to get a hand, but he should do. I wouldn't do this with Euro, but. I'm a lot more confident Percy will go in the right direction. Right, hopefully next thing you see is Percy coming down here and not going that way. Hey boy, you ready to see some ladies? Come on Percy. I'm gonna mill him about in here just to check he's gonna follow a bucket. There he goes. Off to the races, big man. Oh yes. There he goes. No hanging about. Who's this pick of the bunch? 
Who's the lucky lady? So it's the 3rd of May today, so Percy's gone out on the 3rd of May. So we'll give him nine months and hopefully get some more calves off him. That's one of the new cows. Maybe they're really nice and calm though, I really like them so far. I've only had them a day, I can't really speak too soon, but once they have new calves that'll that'll be the telltale sign if they're fiery then. Mm. Percy's got his pick of the bunch. How many has he got here? 18, 20, 22 to pick from. Not too many for him. As a general rule of thumb, bulls can deal with um, the, the amount of months of age they are, that same amount of calves, eh, uh, cows, sorry. So, Percy, when he was younger, when he was just 19, 20 months, we gave him 19, 20 cows. Whereas now, he's a year older, so he's 31, 30, 31 months old. So we'd be fine with 30 cows, up to kind of 35, 37, 40, that's there thereabouts for bulls. Starting to actually resemble a herd, not just a few coos kicking about. So now we've got lots of 44, 43, 44 cows, two bulls. Need to sort out some accommodation for more cows if I want to get more cows. But we'll get there. He's tearing about, He's just having a look around his new premises. Fancy her, Percy? No, no, not today. Who's next? Please stop. <laughs> He's a big boy. Anyway, we'll leave Percy to it. Hopefully he does the job on all these cows. Perfect seeing Percy out like that, charging on. Reminds me of a friend of mine. Ross McLean, named and shamed. Right, back in this big machine. Security. I tell you what, I will not be walking this guy down the road. This lad, twitchy. Uh-huh. Come on boy, settle down. I'll tell you what, when we bought him, he was on a halter, walked about, walked into a trailer, no problem. Don't know what they gave him. I wouldn't want to speculate. I'm not gonna beat around the bush, I don't like him. Makes me twitchy. Oh, you just leave me alone. I really just don't enjoy being in pen with him. Try not to get on the wrong side of a gate. I'd maybe be a wee bit less of a wuss if there was someone else here. But there's not, so I'm just keeping my distance. Who else has got bulls that they don't like? Percy, I think we lucked out with him. He's really nice and calm and he was charging a wee bit once he got outside, but he was excited. But he's much more docile and biddable than that Euro. Right, I'm just out figuring out a few things because this field's split. It's a split field of two different varieties of wheat and they are getting slightly different chemistry. Oh, what I'm spraying today is the other half of the growth regulator. So we sprayed a wee bit a few weeks ago and a wee bit more now. So it's a split growth regulator, just a wee bit more insurance. Okay, it costs you a bit more in traveling and diesel and time, but we're on anyway with different products. So it's fine just to put it in the tank as long as the chemicals mix fine. Not all chemicals mix that well. And it can be chemical reactions and they can eat up and they can be bits and bobs. So as long as you're careful with that, you can kind of put quite a few products in the tank. You can see the split there, two different varieties. So this is KWS Extase and that's RGT Saki. There's a white pheasant. I've only ever seen one and it was that one up at this yard. It's been there for a while. I filmed a whole lot while I've been spraying um, and I'm not going to. So it's now five past five. I'm going to fill up and do one more tank full in here and then I'm going to head back home and play some football. Fold this up, fill up again, one more tank full and then that'll do me for the day. Filled up, two hours till football, spray this, clean it out, home, football boots, shorts, football. Half six, 1400 litres left. Trying to turn into this tram line. 
come on, come on, come on. There we go. It was wet before, so it's got some big old ruts in it. I've still got one full whole lens to do. I'll put this clip in the video just so if I forget that, I can go back in the video and just check. Quite handy. So cut to just now, which is, I don't know, it's about half four in the morning just now. I made it to football. Absolutely nailed my ankle. I don't know what I did. It's half four just now because I was meant to be getting up, flying down to Birmingham to go to Lama to go and see some machinery. Um, but my ankle's absolutely immense. I'm just hobbling about the yard trying to open the shop. Just making this video, it's a wee bit better now. Still still a nightmare to get about, but anyway, cheers for watching, see you in the next one. Put your feet on this side.